Spectre, the lastest film in the James Bond franchise, is about a secret group taking control of world governments and imposing worldwide mass surveillance. Under the guise of a typical James Bond adventure, viewers get a solid dose of the occult elite's predictive programming agenda. Warning. Gargantuan spoilers ahead. After appearing in more than 25 movies spanning half a century, the fictional secret agent, James Bond, is now the face of British intelligence and the suave personification of the MI6. Based on the series of novels written by Ian Fleming, who got most of his insights from his stint as a naval intelligence officer, Agent 007 exports the aims of Britain's elite to the world. A perfect illustration of this occurred in 2012, when James Bond, played by Daniel Craig, appeared as Queen Elizabeth II escort in the opening ceremony video of the 2012 London Olympics. This simple yet powerful image encapsulates the entire raison d'etre of James Bond in popular culture. He safeguards the elite's interests. The same way parents sneak vegetables into their children's spaghetti sauce, James Bond movies sneak pro-elite messages into a big bowl of sex, violence and shiny things. And with Spectre, the agenda takes a definite Illuminati turn. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. While well, James Bond used to be a defender of the British Empire and its interests around the world, recent 007 movies reflect an important change in world politics, which is especially true in Spectre. Loosely based on two separate Ian Fleming novels, Spectre is an original story crafted to push a specific worldview. And, as I have outlined countless times in past videos throughout this channel, the modern agenda is all about revealing how an occult elite is taking over the world and imposing a new world order. Spectre is a perfect example of predictive programming. Exposing the masses to an outlandish concept, so that when it really happens, the public sense of outrage is already dulled out. Of course, Spectre is far from the only movie pushing this message. The same exact premise is found in Kingsman, another British spy movie that came out in 2015. In both movies, the bad guys are the global elite, looking to control the world. Yet, in both movies, there are also clear signs that the British spies are strongly connected to them, and that the only real losers are the masses, a wild herd, with little to no say about what is happening. While in Kingsman, we witness massive depopulation using cell phones, Spectre is more symbolic and upsetting. Indeed, the only time we see regular people in the movie is during the first scene, and they are dead. The first frame of the movie perfectly describes how the elite perceives the masses. We then see an action scene in Mexico, during celebrations for Dia de los Muertos, or the Day of the Dead. All non-elite people are dressed as skeletons and dancing in the streets. After the opening scene, we don't really see regular people in the movie, just the British government inspector struggling for power. However, as the movie subtly lets us know, they are two sides of the same coin. If 007 represents the British government and the MI6, then Spectre, the shady organization looking to control the world, represents the occult elite. The symbol of Spectre is an octopus, a symbol loved by the real world elite. Its many tentacles represent the many areas in which it meddles. In the movie, Captain America, Winter Soldier, the secret elite organization, Hydra, aims to control the world with a new world order. Its symbol also features octopus-like tentacles. The proliferation of these symbols is how mass media programs the world. Not unlike the real occult elite, Spectre gathers in secret meetings in palaces, made by the elite, for the elite. The secret Spectre meeting takes place in Rome, at midnight. In occult and popular culture, midnight is also known as the witching hour. It is defined as the time of night when creatures, such as witches, demons, and ghosts, are thought to appear and to be at their most powerful, and black magic to be most effective. Appropriately enough, in the film, the meeting is the theater for a symbolic blood sacrifice. When one member of the meeting is deemed unnecessary, he gets killed one of the worst ways possible. A gigantic guy gouges his eyes out, eyes represent the elite, and breaks his neck in front of a silent room full of people. During that meeting, a German speaker outlines the successes of Spectre, which are perfectly in line with the real world elite's black agenda. Not a lot of fiction going on there. One of these successes is particularly creepy. The speaker talks about 160,000 migrated females who have been placed in the leisure sector. The leisure sector means prostitution. In subtle scenes like this one, the movie discloses the true devastating agenda of the elite in this day and age. 
As I've mentioned in past videos, the migration crisis has been forced on the world for several reasons. One of the darkest reasons is to easily exploit millions of displaced people who have minimal rights and few written records in all kinds of nefarious human trafficking ventures. It has already started. News sources have reported that over 10,000 refugee children are already missing. How many of them will find themselves in the occult elite's underground child abuse rings? However, like the occult elite, the main goal of Spectre is to subvert all world governments in order to implement worldwide surveillance and implement nothing less than a new world order. Indeed, in one scene, an agent tells Bond. In three days, there's a security conference in Tokyo to decide the new world order. Spectre has infiltrated the British government with its agents, namely one guy that goes by the name of C, to get this new world order going. In several scenes, C uses typical Illuminati phraseology, such as. We're going to bring British intelligence out of the dark ages and into the light. Illuminati means the enlightened. Later, in his speech in Tokyo, C states. Do not let them tell you we need less surveillance. We need more. Much more. I say again, the Nine Eyes Committee would have full access to the combined intelligence streams of all member states. More data, more analysis, less likelihood of terrorist attacks. During that meeting, the participating countries are subjected to a vote to get worldwide surveillance going. We then see that South Africa votes no to the New World Order. Upon learning the outcome of that vote, C says yet another phrase that is very Illuminati. Only a matter of time before South Africa sees the light. Shortly after that negative vote, the South African city of Cape Town is subject to a violent terrorist attack. We see here a clear disclosure of how the real world occult elite works. False flag terror attacks scare populations and nations into submission and into accepting drastic policy changes. All of these scenes basically sum up what the elite has been up to in the past years. Paris attacks, new surveillance laws, the migration crisis, and CV-19. Since this is a spy movie, the occult elite is personified by one supervillain. Ernst Stavro Blofeld. His trademark characteristic tells everything you need to know about him. Later in the movie, Blofeld loses one eye, making him a walking, talking, one-eye sign. Blofeld also likes to say Illuminati mottos. A terrible event can lead to something wonderful. Out of horror. Beauty. This quote is remarkably similar to the occult elite's favorite motto. Ordo ab chow. Order out of chaos. This is a Masonic insignia, featuring the motto Ordo Ab Chow. By using false flag terror, Spectre is taking over the world. Luckily, James Bond is here to kill everybody and have sex with a bunch of girls on his way there. However, the movie makes one thing clear. James Bond is not the people's hero, trying to save freedom and democracy. He's basically a puppet of the system. The British government and Spectre are simply two sides of the same coin. That little adventure you are watching, with the suave good guy and the evil bad guy, that is just the tricks to keep you distracted, while real things are actually happening. The true status of James Bond is clearly depicted during the title sequence of the movie. While we hear a dramatic song by Sam Smith in the background, we see James Bond walking under the protection of the Spectre Octopus, which represents the occult elite. I thought Bond was against them. Even his gun is tightly controlled by the elite's tentacles. This frame shows the same tentacles are behind Blofeld, suggesting that both the good guy and the supervillain are actually part of the same team. This frame shows James Bond walks around as we see a bunch of eyes around him. The title sequence ends with a single eye inside which are tentacles. In short, this intro sequence is all about the occult elite, revealing they control the world and the very movie you are watching, while Sam Smith sings writings on the wall. Once it is established that James Bond is just a puppet of the elite, everything about him from then on makes sense. Like in every James Bond movie, there's a scene where the agent is presented with all the cool gadgets he'll play with during that adventure. This movie is no exception. However, this time, there is a catch. Bond must have a microchip implanted inside of him before he can do anything else. As if to prove 007 is just a simple pawn, we see him get a microchip implant, just like the one they want you to get. Q, the guy in charge of gadgets, tells Bond. Cutting edge nanotechnology. Smart blood. Microchips in your bloodstream that allows us to track your movements in the field. To which Bond responds. That sounds marvelous. In other words, the agent who is supposed to save the world from being monitored at all times by the government is being monitored at all times by the government. On these monitors, we see that Bond's exact location and body stats are tracked in real time. 
These are the heroes the elite wants us to root for, a combination of transhumanism and Big Brother. Later in the movie, Bond gets more of the mind control slave style treatment, this time at the hands of Blofeld. Bond gets his brain drilled into by a machine, controlled by Blofeld. The good guys and the bad guys both mess around with Bond's body. He's just a pawn of them both. In one scene, Bond faces Blofeld through glass. Blofeld's reflection on Bond's face is a subtle way of saying. They're on the same team. In the end, Bond successfully blows up Blofeld's secret lair. But does he kill him? No. Instead, Bond drops his gun and goes to see the girl that he's currently sleeping with. Then another guy comes in and tells Blofeld. Under the Special Measures Act of 2001, I am detaining you on behalf of the Majesty's government. So the bad guy gets arrested under the Special Measures Act of 2001, an ending that is 100% on James Bond. In fact, it is so pointedly ironic that it can only be interpreted as the elite laughing at the viewers. Indeed, the Special Measures Act of 2001 is likely a reference to the Anti-Terrorism, Crime, and Security Act of 2001, which came into law in Britain on December 14, 2001. This law is England's version of the Patriot Act. A massive bundle of restrictive laws that were rushed through the Parliament in the wake of 9 11 the act was widely criticized, with one commentator describing it as, the most draconian legislation Parliament has passed in peacetime in over a century. On 16 December 2004, the law lords ruled that Section 23 was incompatible with the European Convention on Human Rights, but under the terms of the Human Rights Act 1998, it remained in force. Therefore, the bad guy of the movie, who was attempting to use terror to implement worldwide mass surveillance, is arrested under a law that actually implemented mass surveillance after a terror attack. This is the elite sick way of telling you. We are Spectre, and you're living under our rule. Although the Spectre organization is the bad guy, and James Bond is the good guy, none of this actually matters. The movie's true goal is exposing the masses to a specific concept in order to make it part of the collective unconscious. Mass media is all about predictive programming. Acquainting the public with planned societal changes to be implemented by the occult elite. These changes are already happening now. Although James Bond is fighting Spectre for the Queen, we must not forget that the UK has for years been at the forefront of the Big Brother agenda, implementing all kinds of restrictive mass surveillance laws right after every terror attack on the Western world. In short, the UK was taken over by Spectre a long time ago. And, James Bond, our hero, is nothing but a mind control pawn with a microchip in his arm. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This Everything Inside Me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.